So um, today, uh, the 31st of, uh, of July, we reviewed um, some of the uh, treatments for generalized anxiety disorder, um, which include benzodiazepines um, and also uh, antidepressants, um, which, uh, of course, not only treat depression, but anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, and a few other uh, psychiatric disorders. Um, in terms of benzodiazepines, um, we also um, reviewed some of the effects of benzodiazepines um, and the relative affinity for cortex versus um, brainstem, and that and the impacts that that has in terms of the risk of overdose, um, toxic overdose, and uh, suppressing um, brainstem activity. Um, and also um, the narrowing of therapeutic index because there's a compensatory removal more in the cortex than in the brainstem, which then means that the dose that um, will treat the anxiety increases, but the dose that can be toxic changes very little. We then talked about the amygdala in anxiety disorder in this one study looking at the inhibitory effects of the central amygdala which then inhibits this area called the basolateral amygdala. And the idea here was to test how turning on the central amygdala can affect anxiety-like behaviors. And so in this, they had um, either control mice um, or mice that have channel rhodopsin in the central amygdala that will then allow the neurons, the, the, the researchers to activate this inhibitory connection. And they measured time in the sort of elevated plus maze in the open exposed arms. And what they found is that um, uh, the um, that the animals that um, uh, have channel rhodopsin, when those central amygdala cells are on, there is a um, decrease in anxiety as measured by um, more time spent hanging out in those exposed open arms. Um, we then talked about um, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF. Um, this is a sort of backward signal that postsynaptic neurons send back to presynaptic cells um, that um, is actually necessary for keeping synapses together and also keeping the neurons in general alive. Um, and this, this sort of ensures that the important connections are maintained, the neurons that are important for brain function are maintained, um, and then especially in development, um, but even throughout life, um, neurons that are not used um, uh, end up degrading way, dying. Um, it turns out as well that the hippocampus is basically the only place in the brain where new neurons are made, um, that also new neurons are dying throughout life, um, so this total number stays the same. Um, but this is a sort of potential place where, unlike everywhere else in the brain, we have the opportunity, if we can increase the rate of new neurons being born, we can get a bigger hippocampus, which is then going to, because the hippocampus is part of negative feedback, help to maybe maybe help out with um, um, uh, cortisol regulation. And so to look at this, um, we discussed this Malberg study. And in the Malberg study, um, they wanted to see how do SSRIs, in this case Prozac, fluoxetine, change the rate of new neurons being born. So they have mice without SSRIs and then various five, uh, 1, 5, 14, or 28 days of SSRI treatment. And they measure the number of new neurons that are born in the hippocampus. And what they see is that there are more new neurons being born, especially after a couple of weeks. And so what that indicates is that um, increasing serotonin um, takes a little while, but it will probably, it probably increases BDNF amount, and that means then that more neurons are born um, and stay alive. And work since then has actually indicated that serotonin receptors can, again, it might take weeks for this to take effect, but turning on serotonin re receptors can, in fact, increase the expression of the BDNF gene. So, um, and so this provides a totally separate mechanism from what we've talked about in terms of 5-HT2 receptor removal um, that also explains the delay in antidepressant effects um, and the role of antidepressants in um, helping to manage stress and anxiety and, um, and chronic uh, stress, which can either cause somebody to be depressed or anxious or both. Um, uh, that um, is yet another mechanism for, for understanding what goes on here.